Hi there, my name is Ashley Lee and I am a LightNet collaborator. We are here today interviewing Tammy Stone about her contact experience. We are on a quest to interview 100 incredible people who've accomplished contact with star people, loved ones, and those who have transitioned and energies and entities for our guidance and spiritual relationships. Know someone that could be interviewed? Reach out to team at lightnet.org and, and be a part of our mission to share the most valuable knowledge on the planet. If you are interested in finding out more about Contact and our other labs, check them out at lightnet.org. Welcome, Tammy. We are so excited for you to be here today. And wow, Contact, right? What, what inspired you? to really connect with the idea that I want to make contact in our world. Yeah. What? First of all, thanks for having me, Ashley and like that. Um, really appreciate the chance to be here and kind of just share a little bit of my story. <laughs> um, it's kind of interesting, actually. So my background is in hypnotherapy. Well, first engineering and then hypnotherapy. And I think that gives me a really interesting brain. Um, but uh, through hypnotherapy, I uh, gathered experiences going to other lifetimes, which kind of piqued interest in just like, yeah, visiting other dimensions and places like that. Um, then that led to interest in channeling, um, direct and open channeling for myself and others. Um, and then it kind of went from there. Um, so I think like, the main question, like the, the main entry point for me for contact was self discovery initially, um, healing and learning more about who I am and what my purpose is in this lifetime on this planet. Um, wow. So when you were inspired to create contact, you wanted self discovery and then some of that inner guidance. And so, how did you contact angels, multidimensionals, past loved ones, or ETs? How did you create that contact? Yeah, so it's been like a, it's really been an intuitive like journey where it didn't all come at once. Like I was, I started a really, I think practice with meditation is really important because it just puts you in that centered open space and I feel like that's like the first step. <laughs> um, but so yeah, I, I started this uh, really great meditation routine every morning, just like 20 minutes every morning. And then um, one of those times when I was meditating, a clear spirit came through. It's actually a deceased, um, somebody who passed away in our community who I wasn't even very close with um, that needed help crossing over. And I was like, did what I could, <laughs> but uh, followed my intuition. But anyway, so so I worked, I, I was like, well, that's really interesting. Um, so then I got some one-on-one -on -one coaching for direct and open channeling. Um, and then, so just getting to like the, how did you do it? Um, there's also a lot of other methods. So I, through hypnosis, I, I learned beyond quantum healing, which is a hypnosis technique that is very similar to QHHT, if anybody follows Dolores Cannon, um, where you go into other lifetimes and other dimensions. And that really pushed my consciousness to making contact with star seed families and things like that. Um, and then coming to, and I know I'll, I'll kind of answer your question in a more concrete way, but I'm just gonna share my story a little bit first, if that's okay. Yeah. Um, yeah and then so i'm i'm exploring the beyond quantum healing i'm being the client you know doing the sessions i'm visiting other places then i'm taking other clients to these places and then i got introduced to dr stephen greer's work and that was around the summer of last year went down that whole rabbit hole that's what led me to go to the ce5 contact uh the 250 contact that lightnet did last year then i learned about the ce5 protocols and kind of took all these methods from just like learning direct channeling, open channeling, my BQH, and then CE5 to develop 
yeah. And, and now I lead a CE5 meditations in, in our little group in Moab. So it's just kind of wanted to show the whole journey there. <laughs> wow. That's great. Right. So when, when we make contact or when we decide we would like to make contact, it isn't just this kind of one and done thing. It right. like leads you into these many areas that you shared about so deeply. And so when you did actually create contact, what did you experience? Okay. It's so different every single time. I would say one thing that's pretty ubiquitous is this feeling of love, like this just feeling of openness and love and connection. Um, it's, it's open. It's free. It's, it's liberating. It's without question either. Um, I'm a person, I'm an engineer, right? So I have this overthinking mind, very airy. I have air all in my chart. So, but the times that I've made contact, it's no question about it. And you, when a spirit, if it's just a spirit that's coming through, you can just, you know, you can just ask like, who is this? Who's coming through? And I'll get a name, you know, oh, this is that person. Oh, right. Okay. Well, thanks for joining. Like, thanks for being here, you know, <laughs> but it's very, it's very direct, you know? Um, yeah. So to speak so, kind of about it. Yeah. That's a description of what you're sharing is there's no bones about it. You've made contact. And so, so what is that in your experience? Is it a feeling? Is it, do you see it? Do you hear it? How do you experience that, that contact? physically in your in your body in your experience where where are you and what is it that you feel yeah um I, that's actually a great question because everybody experiences those clairs very differently right um i'm not a very visual person um so i am very clairsentient and claircognizant so i'll have a knowing and a feeling mostly if I want when i'm under hypnosis i can start to gather visuals but it's almost like I have a knowing of what something looks like rather than seeing it myself. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's just a knowing and a feeling. That's so beautiful to share too. So the inside knowing, because that can be very different for different people, right? That inner knowing, the knowing that you know that you know it's true, right? <laughs> and so for you, Tammy, what is that inner knowing? How would you describe that to everyone to share that, <laughs> that you know that you know that you know that this thing is real? Oh my gosh, it's, it's such a hard question um, because you just know. Uh, yeah, how do you know? I think it's like the for me, it's like the combination of the physical sensation, I think, combined with the knowing. So it's not just like so there's the knowing, but then there's that heart opening, right? There's that that loving experience that's coming through at that same time. And for me, the intersection of those two things must be it because so this physiological intersection so maybe in in your chest do you like have this sensation that your heart is opening is your breath easier are you more calm or centered what is it that you're experiencing with this heart opening yeah yes i've had it's, again it's like i've had contact when i've been in really um terrible emotional states and physical states, just like, you know, having a moment, having an experience, right? And then like something's coming through. So I wouldn't say it's required, um, but if it's self-solicited contact, not like something that's like an important message, you know, like coming to you at that, like that's what that's what those experiences feel like for me. Um, but anyway, yeah, if it's a self-solicited thing where it's just something that you wanna practice and you wanna work on, yes, being very calm, very peaceful, very in the present. Um, I actually, I wrote down a couple um, of the steps that I do if if we have time. Yes, please share those. Um, so yeah, so uh, first is the getting centered. So that for me, smells are great. I love like burning something, smelling something, spraying something, clearing the energy of the room, you know, just anything to help you get into the present moment connecting with the energies of above and below. Um, if you're in a group, this is with the whole group and you're doing group coherence activities. So that's for like the C5. Um, opening up the space. So once everybody is peaceful, centered, coherent, opening up the energetic space and calling in support from our galactic teams, from our loved ones, from guides, from angels, whoever would like to support me or the group for our highest and best, calling them in. 
asking them to help us in protecting the space um, and then setting a very clear intention. And that intention, if you're open channeling, can just be my intention is to open this space for anyone who would like to come forth for a message for my greatest and highest good or whatever. Um, then uh, following your intuition from there on out, just being open, not pushing and just staying present. Sometimes nothing comes through and that's totally fine. Um, then you have this interaction, maybe. And then afterwards, making sure to express gratitude um, and then disconnecting the energies and closing the space again. So yeah, I, I wrote that down because I was like, there's there's common themes that we, regardless if you're doing a hypnotherapy session, I'm meditating or we're doing a CE5, right? So yeah, so, so many different ways to create contact, you know? I have to say, being with LightNet and everything, Zinka came through with a really beautiful process, too, of ham radios, you know, mm -hmm. and so our ET contact star friends can speak in through the ham radio, start blipping it in a certain pattern, and we can answer questions and have telepathic communications through the ham radios. And so there, there are these these many methods in which we can create contact. Which is your favorite method of creating contact? Wait, you know what's funny is as you were saying that, something came to my mind that I didn't think of before I was thinking about this interview, which was I play intuitive piano. It's my favorite way to make contact because I get into a flow state and I just play whatever um, is coming through. And as I'm in this state, all of a sudden I'll get messages like I'll get downloads or I'll get the download later, but I just know I'm in this magical space. Um, so that's just funny. I didn't even, I didn't even think about that, but. Wow. So in the flow of playing piano, so yeah. being musical in the flow created that connection and that contact. Oh yeah. Yeah. My, my grandmother passed away a few months ago and she, after she passed, she, I played the most beautiful things just through her. I can't even take credit. Like it, like, yeah, so it's, it's a really beautiful way to connect with other spirits. Wow, wow. And so what advice would you give to someone looking to make contact with angels, multidimensionals, past loved ones, like your grandmother, you know, not your grandmother, but their grandmother. I mean, they can. She's and, great. And, and, <laughs> she's like, and, so, got this infinite energy, like, and it, right? she came through when I was doing Reiki for someone else and the Reiki person picked it up. She's like, how's your yeah, how are you doing with your grandma? I was like, why are you asking? She's like, she's, she's here. Uh, anyway. Um, that's so, that's so cute. It's so loving. Isn't it? And, and, and even like, what advice would you give someone looking to make contact with our star people, our star friends, our ETs? What would you share about how someone could begin the process of looking forward and creating, creating contact for themselves? yeah um the first thing is like open your mind like know it's possible like it's all possible so the first thing is you have to understand that it's possible and for me that that i am very logical so i needed to like go to a medium and have them channel for me like because i need that firsthand experience of channeling is possible right mm -hmm. so if you're like having trouble with the belief around it just go have a firsthand experience go to a contact group like go sit in the ce5 contact group and be part of it um i had never seen ships until i went to the ce5 in sedona and it's almost it's you can't deny oh we saw a couple ships like they there's nothing else to explain the phenomenon we saw so if you're a first if you're like a logic person um just go get the firsthand experience first right after that it's practicing your meditations, you know, learning, like the more quiet you can get, the more connected to self you can get, the more, um, yeah, I think like the easier context going to be. Um, yeah. I agree. You know, that, that presence, that silence and removing distractions from our environment really does support us in making that connection. Yeah, because the, 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 that kind of connection is quieter, right? It's softer. It's more gentle. And um, we're, we're not always used to that in our everyday experiences. Right. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I'm out all the time. And, and so as we close this interview, I would love to share, what is your most favorite contact or type of contact you like to create in your life? Oh, man. Like, 
one of my favorite from the like a past ex my favorite past experience or in, in general in well both end what was your favorite past experience and then moving forward in this present moment what what kind of contact do you look forward to in our near future yeah okay my favorites have been so I have like living people come to me too. And um, my partner, um, Ryan, that I'm deeply in love with, he'll come to me in times where we're apart and it just makes me cry every time. Like, wow. it's just like the most loving thing. So like, honestly, that has been expansive because it's come to me at times that I, I really needed help to move through something and my yeah, and my favorite time in the past, he came to me as his like a blue being higher self version of him. And this was in the very, very first time I've ever been in con contacted by interdimensional being before I did any beyond quantum healing before I visited anything. He came to me in this form and I it was just like this explosion of love. So, um, but so there's that but then moving forward i mean i am really interested in making i haven't had direct contact with other inter interdimensional beings or ets um the, like outside of this outside of spirits that i know or guides and things like that right so when we do ce5 i've seen ships but i have not seen or interacted yet with another et just like kind of coming in and visiting you know um so i'm excited to kind of open the realm to more like socializing <laughs> socializing contact wow yeah. thank you tammy for being here with us today to express your experiences with contact and and i love closing with socializing contact wow right <laughs> coming into group contact that's fantastic Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. We are so grateful that you joined us in our lab called Contact. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Ashley. Thanks, Leighton.